women can go to go through like a, a puberty period three times in their lives. We do. That's and why we have an OBGYN. What's up, y'all? It's Ashley. I'm Fee. It's Melody. And Cody here. And you've tapped into The, the Mama's, Mama's Den. Den. Hey there, Mama's Den listeners, uh, both on audio and, of course, watching us on YouTube because we are stunning. And if you're not watching us on YouTube, you're missing out. What mm -hmm. is your problem? What mm -hmm. is your problem? Um, we're super excited today because we have Dr. Kendra Segura, woo! a.k.a. Woo! Dr. Woo! Kendra. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. She is back. We love Hanging talking about girls. diastasis so much that we have brought you back to jump into menopause. My favorite. Favorite, for, favorite. Right? It is my favorite topic. But first, it is Cody. It really is. Yeah, it's all I think about. Not all I think about. Okay, I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but I think about it a lot. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm 40, and I know, and I see a lot of the celebrities talking about it. Well, more now than before. Yeah, yeah. And I absolutely. have family members talking about it, and so I'm like, oh, I'm coming up on it. Yeah. And I don't want it to catch me off guard. Yeah. And definitely. as Ashley likes to say, I'm a researcher. You Wait, are can we talk about child. these vitamins? Hey. Yes. Dr. Kendra came in here hey. and blessed us. She, she said, yes. "Health is wealth," and that. got in her bag. Right. Literally, and, and on all the ways. She got in her Gucci bag, and right. she gave us these. Tell us about these vitamins. So I, when I was pregnant, I couldn't really find a supplement that <laughs> I could tolerate. Number two, you know, doctors are the worst patients. So mm. you have to take your prenatal and, 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 mm -hmm. and if I'm already nauseous, if my, if my baby is very particular, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to take so many supplements. So I'm yeah. like, you know what? Let me come up with something for my patients that is easy to take, that you don't have to take all these other supplements with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, proud to say it's vegan, free. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley vegan confirmed, Ashley studied free. the okay. ingredients. Yes. <laughs> and so um, another thing that is good about this is that I call it prenatal multi because we all can take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, optimizing our health is the most important thing mm -hmm. because we don't know what is in store for us, what is gonna come ahead as far as the challenges with health. So mm -hmm. the more your immune system is ready Stay ready so you don't have to get with oh, that. Yeah. Okay, okay. prenatal vitamins. Give me my Give me my You can find it Wait, on Ask Dr. Kendra. How old is your baby? He is five and Ooh, just girl. started school, oh, so I'm a month yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. And you guys, I just have respect for mothers. It's just, how do you expect me to drop? him off. <laughs> I'm running because his teacher is firm. I'm not going to say mean or strict. <laughs> right. She's firm. Mm -hmm. We already have one tardy and it's like three strikes. Oh, you're just out. Just one girl. You just, better than I me. mean, he just, you know, he just started. We're at one three month in. Three strikes you're out? Yeah, this is. Wait, real. out of the school? Um, You get like some type of rep, like you True get like, scene, like uh, yeah. something in your a permanent record. Oh and then it's, it's a private school. For five wow. yeah. yeah, he takes assessment tests. He has girl, a quiz every, an oral exam every <laughs> week. But number one, how do I, how am I supposed to get there? And then I'm supposed to get to work and see my patients. Like yeah. it's, it's such a little narrow time. Yeah. How are we doing this? We're not. What, no, no, what you better happening? do it, girl. You, you only got earlier. two more strikes. You, well, you got to wake up struggling. earlier. I mean, <laughs> oh Somebody my God. Somebody going to be like, the baby or I am. Yeah. So no, I just don't like talking. that. And then you guys didn't tell me that once he starts school, I'm back in it. I'm doing the homework. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. Y'all didn't tell me that. Oh, the emails. You get, are you getting no 17 emails off. a week from the school? Oh, bombarded. <laughs> yeah. I am, you know, fundraising, um, how he's doing, mm -hmm. everything. You can't say the dog ate the homework because you got to take a picture of it, upload it to the app. Oh, yeah. Y'all talking about that dad going to school. You know, <laughs> I'm, so I'm Ashley, stressed out. Ashley will homeschool your son. Huh? Ashley will homeschool your Wait, son. If you t let my daughter be a patient of yours for free. <laughs> Same time, same time. Okay, I know you like that. Okay, like <laughs> like barter. But it's stressful. So again, I just don't like the drop off time and then the time getting to work. Okay, so yeah. that's, that's stressful. Yeah, your nails are. You know, fire. I'm about to. I, I decided <laughs> she to said, she said, out she said, with all of this before I go full time, and work, I still before, make time to get my nails done. Okay. You know, this okay. is part of my me time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yes. saw some inspo. I love this. Those are cute. But you know, I'm on vacay, so you know, <laughs> so people are like, okay, how are you gonna be up? Somebody's gonna make a comment. How is she checking <laughs> vaginas? You wear gloves with that. Oh yeah. But so so let, let's just preempt. I'm on vacation. Lady. She's on vacation. She said, I'm Doctors. on vacation. She's okay. taking vacations. Okay. So, yeah. Well, also, and deserve. This makes me feel like that me. Long, you'll put gloves on. It's not like you're sticking no, your bare no, hand but, up No, there. but I don't have anything on. Like, oh. I have my own nails. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know. You got to do, do a check. 
Yeah. And so you, people are like, oh my God, is she going to be like checking people with that? No, <laughs> this is for me That's to for feel like, okay, look at this. I'm on vacation. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, I look yeah. at it and it relaxes me. And you're selling pills now. So, you know, yes. so I'm doing my other jobs. Yes. Okay. Or yeah. Yeah. Else. But also, I, I mean, I think you might need to rethink this school child. That sounds real serious. <laughs> you know what? I thought about it because I, I say, hey, when we park, get out the car. And we got to run. <laughs> no, run. I'm dropping no, run. Right. They put the cones in. Oh, I'm like, yeah, swerve, yeah, I'm yeah. like, swerve. Irvin, I don't get rid of that comb. Like, I gotta go to work. Yes. And so he's like, okay, okay. And, and then just, if you're oh, late, baby. you gotta walk them in, huh? You can't just go through the car line. Oh, yes. 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 They they make a big mm -hmm. like deal about it where mm -hmm. they lock the door. Oh, the they're not. I know you lied to me. I, I mean, I'm common. like, oh yeah. my God. Is this, like oh. if you okay, so same thing with Cam. If I if I take Cam to school and we're early, like the bell, the there's two bells. The first bell rings at 823. The second bell when school starts is 825. Every kid has to be in that gate for the school, and all the parents have to be out that gate if you walk your kid in wow. by 823. If you are not walking your kid in, um, you have to join the drop-off line. There's no dropping mm -hmm. off on like any just random street corner, no U-turns, none of that stuff. And they and they will close that gate at 823. You know how many times mm -hmm. Cameron's been like, wait, and they love him, so they open the gate for him. <laughs> but like technically he's late if they close that gate and that's yeah. it yeah they do lock and then you yeah, go then true. you have See? to go through See? the and office that's, that's and then you, the minutes yes the and then you check in you have to check in with the office well yeah. listen here mm -hmm. you're living a life of luxury melanie because 8 23 my children have to be in school at 8 a.m in too, the schoolhouse i'm 7 55. oh that's that private school life <laughs> 755. That's that private oh school life. We don't Lord. have those hours in my home school. <laughs> and then we have to, and we have to pick bitch. up. We have to pick like his uh, his menu for lunch. Yes. Like every. I mean, I'm just like that's too much. You know, I thought about homeschooling, but I'm like, who's gonna do Girl, it? Girl, you not homeschooling your son. It's somebody else. I'm like, Dr. Really? Kendrick, Thing, you having a hard really, time getting him there? Really. What made you think you go homeschool? <laughs> <laughs> And make lunch. You, you're not doing that. Then let's take that off the table. I can't lie. No, make lunch. We can find a more Anything? lenient school. No. Do you have the no. option to not? Oh. Yeah. No, yeah. but like but when, he, like when he knows how to do to sign not. language, he says pong. Oh. You know, so when he comes home, he starts saying that. I'm like, oh, it's okay. worth it. That's, That's why we got you in here. That's Wait, can I, uh, slight pivot, because y'all wouldn't listen to Melanie. She says she makes lunch every day. My question nice. is, what do you make? So do I. Me too. I yes, boo, but you're at home. We're talking about packing lunch. I, I'm it's always the same curious. thing. You no, got to stand in the kitchen and make a lunch. So no, I eat I'm it. always curious what moms put into the lunch that has to sit in the box for three hours. That's not what you're doing. Cam, Cam, I'll make Cam sandwiches. Like he likes sandwiches, like turkey and Swiss sandwiches sometimes I like a tuna sandwich sometimes i get these little um middle eastern mediterranean um grape leaves mm -hmm. he likes wow. those he do like a cold pasta he likes pizza That's we'll do the chicken nuggets sounds like the menu at the queue. yeah like queue. but you know make it at home and then i'll always add like a fruit mm -hmm. i'll add like a granola bar some Healthy. vegetables and hummus mm -hmm. something and that's it. Yeah, and this I is like my other favorite topic. I yeah. pack my I pack um peace and zen lunch every day too. Applesauce. They do like bao. Today they had chicken and rice. Yep. Jamaican. Rice. I mean Jamaican. Oh, wow. Zen loves him and Jamaican patty. Are y'all meal prepping? That's what I was I, just gonna I ask. I do Are like yesterday prep? I did because I knew this morning was gonna be chaotic. Right. Yeah. Depending on what my morning looks like. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, for the I most part this. I try. It's a game changer. Yeah. But like chicken nuggets, fries, all the hot food, I don't make that yeah. the night before. I'm not about to send my baby with frozen food. I make it in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I make like, I make it in the morning because he eats lunch at I think it's like eleven twenty or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's like three hours. He has a snack in between, and Cameron likes cold food. Like, he's really like a college kid. If we have pizza one <laughs> night for dinner, the next day he'll be like, Mom, can I have pizza? And I'm like, Cam, it's cold. He'll be like, I don't care. He wants yeah. to eat it cold. Growing. Growing. She he's loves growing. cold pizza, yeah, too. Cold oh my God. God. But what time are you guys getting up in the morning? These so are the what's questions a mom that need answers. 6, 630? 6.30? I'm mm -hmm. 6.45. But it's also because Peace and Zen can do their own thing. Nice. They get some noise. Mm. Train them up at six. Train them young. Well, today I got up at 6.30. I get up whenever the baby wakes me up, and then I... Text her father. I, I wish. Where's my phone? I will show you all of my text messages to him. I've seen saying, them. She's I up. Can vouch. She's up. She's up. That's the first text message that I send Chia every morning. She's up. She's up. He like on my way, and he comes and gets her, and then I shut the door and I go back to sleep for like an hour. So probably like I eight every day. I love him. He's, I love him. He's, he's a girl. From angel. I'm mean, sent from oh angel. Sent from heaven. He's really yes. like helping. He's like a partner in it. No, it's he's a not, real partner. It's just mm -hmm. not like you know because we have a mental load. It's that mental load that women carry. That the unseen mental load that really mm -hmm. stresses us out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why you that know part. heart disease number one killer of us. And I just have so much respect as I go through my motherhood journey. My hat is off to everybody. Yeah. All well, the listen, women. Shout out to Add to, to the us. mental load that once we hit a certain time in our oh, lives, no. we start sweating we uncontrollably. And 
God knows what else, please. There's so many things that we've heard that are the symptoms of like perimenopause and menopause. First off, what's the difference? Yes. 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 Also, what are the real symptoms? What should we be looking for? I know it was a hard pivot, right. but I feel like we have a lot on our shoulders. Right. That was a women. good segue. Right. right. I Thank like that you. because it's just like as we go through perimenopause, that mental load, mm -hmm. we start to forget. Ooh. Mm -hmm. We start to need to make different strategies and tactics to keep up with our high energy lifestyle. But yet it's like that people don't know what to do with this. So perimenopause starts as early as 40. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, the old definition was 45, but we all knew as women mm -hmm. that no, I get a hot flash here and there. So I even say 38. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so in practice, you know, if you're 38 and you're you're feeling hot here and there, it's not in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's the estrogen is starting to decrease. But the medical definition of perimenopause, it starts as age 40. Okay. Menopause starts at the age where you stop getting periods mm -hmm. for 12 months. Mm. Oh, okay. So it has to be a year where you have no menstrual cycle, and that is your definition of when you hit mm -hmm. menopause. I have a question, mm -hmm. and can you say if this is a myth or not? Because you said the full 12 months, is it true that if you like go six months without a period, but then all of a sudden you get one, it takes you right back to the beginning of the cycle? No. Okay. Th thank God for that. Okay. Because so, I've heard this and I was like, this cannot be life for real. <laughs> so if you still have your period, then it's perimenopause. Right. Right. Oh, so my mom's not going through menopause. No, but I do want to say this because it gets tricky. Mm -hmm. This is where people are like, well, I'm like bleeding like I was when I first started having a period. Yeah. So the first sign of perimenopause, other than, you know, the irritation hot flashes is that your periods may come closer together mm. oh. and they might be heavier. So you're in the first cycle or the first phase of perimenopause. Wow. So Wait, that's what confuses a lot of women. Can those two things be separate? So you said so more, the they come closer together and heavier. What if it's just heavier, but it's like regular timeline? I would still check with your OBGYN because okay. we may, depending on your risk factors, like if you have diabetes, mm -hmm. if you have high blood pressure and you have heavier bleeding and we're 40, 45 mm -hmm. and up, and you may be a little fluffy, you know, the extra mm -hmm. pounds and your family history, you may need an endometrial biopsy. So that is just in the office. It's, it sounds intimidating, but it's really in the office. A small four millimeter pipel mm -hmm. goes through the cervix mm -hmm. to the uterus. And I say through the cervix because a lot of women, we get confused mm -hmm. over, oh, the doctor, I had an endometrial biopsy, but it's really, you had a pap smear. Mm -hmm. So this is an evaluation of your uterus, the mm -hmm. tissue in there, mm -hmm. just like how we swab you for a cervical cancer screening, mm -hmm. because we want to see what's going on with the cells on your cervix. Cervix. are they changing yeah. the endometrial biopsy is you know what what's going on inside your uterus yeah. so we can prevent from getting to cancer so you might have a little mm. precancerous cells so yes. if it changes mm -hmm. in your 40 and up make sure you check in with Gosh. your OBGYN. So I never even considered that so is that something that women have to consider when they reach the age of perimenopause or menopause that like like cancer in the uterus right. is a, is a when risk. Do, when do yes. you when yes. do you like do that? When do you get checked? So that? so the magic number is forty, and if you have other risk factors, we it may not be normal perimenopause mm. okay. because normal perimenopause, you know, it's not going to cause you to miss work. It's not going to have you. Um, changing your life or planning your life around your periods. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing things that are out of the ordinary, mm -hmm. you have to check in with your OBGYN so we can do an assessment to see, hey, maybe you are a candidate for an endometrial biopsy mm -hmm. because there's normal, there's a normal way to go to perimenopause. Most women, our brain regulates and adjust to the decreasing estrogen. So most of us, we're okay, but then there's a large portion of us, like 30 to 40%, where we're like, wait a minute, I what's happening with my periods? I'm mm -hmm. like struggling, I'm missing work, I'm having a lot mm -hmm. of accidents. And so, mm -hmm. yes, it check in with your OBGYN. Wow. Go ahead. I was gonna say, you one of the, what's like even more of a technical explanation of perimenopause? You mentioned like estrogen is lowering, is that what's happening? Yeah, so starting at age, so age 40 is the medical definition of when perimenopause, when you enter perimenopause. Mm -hmm. And so on average, it takes about seven plus years to actually go to menopause. Mm -hmm. And so they just came up with the age before it was 45. Right. So they just came up with a study and around 40, they just looked at when our estrogen levels decreased to a point it. where it can cause 
hot flashes, mm -hmm. anxiety. Girl, I can go on the list. Yes. Agitation, Please give us brain, like at fog, least five brain fog, yeah. um, loss of libido, um, an, a frozen shoulder. shoulder. I've heard about this. Okay. I kind of have had that for 20 years. Frozen <laughs> shoulder is when all of a sudden you just can't move your arm. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. can last, the episode can last from seconds to, in some patients, like a day or two. Yeah. And so then we think, oh, let me go to the neurologist, which you always want to do. Yeah. yeah. Let me go to my primary before I say frozen shoulder. It's a diagnosis of exclusion. So you want to get, you know, make sure you're not having a stroke or make sure, you know, nothing oh more goodness. serious is going on. too much. Um, ashy skin. It's a lot. Oh, girl, um, then I've been going through the since I was born. Ashy, ashy, ashy. <laughs> just and I just ashy. asked, uh, I, listen, I just <laughs> asked for some um, lotion when I got here. So you put all this lotion and your skin just, it's ashy. And you're like, yeah. dang, you know, and they start putting the stuff on in the shower, you know, so ashy skin, dry skin, mm -hmm. vaginal um, dryness, mm -hmm. but that agitation, the irritability, the brain fog, these are all oh, extreme fatigue. And you said we should not take off work when we have all these symptoms. Huh? Because I'm like, I just <laughs> they gotta need to be give at us home. period right. days. I'm still fighting for period days. Right. You know, right. so unfair for us to not have period days and use our personal time and sick time. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, so that needs to that needs to happen. We need yeah. to get behind well, that. Well, I have a, I have a question. What if you have some of those symptoms prior to being 40, like like I was joking, but I'm really ashy, right? So this has always been an issue with me. And then like my cycles have been so heavy since I had my last child. Mm, like, and mm. then I actually had a um, abnormal pap smear and they were like, oh, it's not HPV. So, but there could be like cancerous cells in there. Right. But then my great grandmother, she died from cervical cancer. So then they were like, okay, now we have to check it more often. Right, every year. So, yeah, and I'm 39. Right. So I'm just wondering like for someone that maybe even a little bit younger than me, if you have all these symptoms, how do you even know or how would you know that you were entering perimenopause if you're already having those symptoms? You know what I mean? Your body's telling you that you I can tell I can tell that you're going through perimenopause. Really? So like just like before the medical definition was 45, but a girlfriend like start talking like I feel I, I feel a hot right. flash here and there. You can't tell me that I don't feel mm -hmm. that I, the extreme that fatigue. Time. So it's really a spectrum and science is always a little bit behind actual like what we hear in practice mm. um so yeah it's it's literally like that that the dryness of the skin like yeah. it literally hit me you know and i put, my, I put myself on i'm wondering too head. like i'm just trying to think of like you know how there could also be something else wrong with you that mirrors those same symptoms mm -hmm. you know what i like mean thyroid like thyroid disease yes like thyroid. if you have a thyroid condition or if you like sometimes even having low iron or something's wrong like it could just trigger all these other things so I'm just trying to think, like, is there one particular thing that's really like a telltale sign? No. It, it's not okay. because it, it's intermixed with thyroid disease, anemia. Like wow. there's so many things that overlap. Yeah. So but when you're feeling different and off, I always say, go get your physical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When everything is normal, you know, or if you have a cool OBGYN, you know, me, I would do that for you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, to say, hey, let's get to the bottom of this because yeah. it's your endocrine system and the thyroid, just like, you know, if we're going through menopause or hormones, that's all the endocrine mm -hmm. system. So it's all interconnected. Mm -hmm. But that was a good question. There is none. Mm -hmm. Lab results, as far as um, when I tell my patients, if you think you're menopause, ask your doctor to order a hormone panel. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's what I was gonna ask. So, so, so okay. there we go. Hormone panel. So hormone okay. panel. And so we can see, and for my patients, I always have to get it because I, I, I would wanna know, well, what is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Okay, so then that's the hormone panel, that if it hits a certain number, mm -hmm. you are menopausal, or we can tell if you're kind of peri. So wait, wait, wait menopausal but would you have the period like menopausal is like full-blown menopause right 12 like months no more period. no yes. period okay, so that is it. what menopause is got it got it got it and as long as you are getting a period even if it's once every eight months you're still in perimenopause mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is so you, you can say that again mm -hmm. yes okay so mm -hmm. if you don't according to dr kendra i'm learning today if you don't have a period for 12 months you are officially in menopause mm -hmm. if you have a period within a 12-month period even if it's once every six months, once every, yes. once every four yes. months, you are still in perimenopause. Mm -hmm. You have not hit menopause yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And another place I really want to just on this platform is let everybody know, most commonly I get women who come, they're, they're menopausal already for years. And then all of a sudden oh. they get a period oh, and wow. they come to me and say, Dr. Kendra, I need some birth control. And I'm like, 
<laughs> what do you mean? Right. I'm young, my period started. And I'm like, well, for how long? Mm -hmm. Oh, it started uh, six months. I bleed every month. That is not right. There's a problem there. That's mm. postmenopausal bleeding. Yeah. Oh. That needs a workup every time. Yeah. So that's why I was like, say that again. Okay, so let's say this. Let's say someone has gone through 12 months of no period. They've officially entered menopause. And you're saying if the period starts back up after that 12 month period, there's something to investigate. Right, it's postmenopausal bleeding. And whenever we hear that word, that needs to be worked up. Yeah. Mm. But a lot of us don't know that. No, a I've lot never of even us, heard of this. Like Me I can either. get pregnant. I mean, I need depo. And I'm, and so I'm like, okay, let me slow down. And let me explain it to you. And you right. tell everybody in your community that yeah. you know. So yeah. that period that comes postmenopausal is not one that can, that is ovulating to, that could um, support there, a pregnancy. Right, and that's because the estrogen is so low mm. that it we, there's no eggs. It can't release it. Yeah. Mm. And so I do want to say this, just to, you know, how women, we are awesome. So estrogen is the only hormone in the body that doesn't, um, the body doesn't produce it once it's gone. Mm -hmm. So like testosterone, when when men go through menopause, there is a decline in testosterone. Now say that one more time. <laughs> she said not menopause, she said menopause, yes. okay? Because yes. men, you too. You is too. it the same age? Like same age range? Um, it's older um, and that is probably like in the 50s when the prostate can start enlarging, mm. testosterone levels go down. Mm. Maybe people, like maybe some men you know or start, they cry a little easier. Mm. Um, they're just a little bit out of balance or where their you know, emotions on their sleeve. That's yeah. because of the declining testosterone, but mm. it's always detectable. So, like I said, all the hormones in our body, they always reproduce itself. Maybe not at the highest rate, depending on your age, but I want to just let you guys know that estrogen is the only hormone in the body that doesn't, once it's gone, it doesn't wow. reproduce itself. Yeah. That's deep. Wow. And right. so, I have, I have so many questions. I'm just fat. I did not know I was going to have this many questions. Can you explain the importance of estrogen for women in our journeys from Absolutely. when we're younger to young women to teenage, all the age, all the stages of yes. life, why estrogen is important and when it is no longer necessary mm. and why? Oh, that was such a good question. Okay, so estrogen is in charge of um, our, you know, our, you know, getting the puberty, taking mm -hmm. us through puberty. Then it's um, for bone health, okay, for our cognitive mm -hmm. function. It, it's there to regulate, help fight against cardiovascular disease. Mm. It helps us with our skin. Wow. It gives you that nice glow, that flushing glow that we're all after. Okay. Is that like an increase in estrogen when you're pregnant? Yes. Boom. That boom, that glow, it gives you that vaginal mm -hmm. tightening. It helps with elastin and collagen. It basically helps from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the question that you asked, when is estrogen no longer needed for women. Mm -hmm. It's studies show age 65 and older. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's why when you go in and you realize that you want to depart with your uterus, because at this point she's rebelling against us and there's no need for you to be with me anymore. Mm -hmm. You bear wow. children, you did what you need to do, sis. It's time to go. <laughs> right. wow. You want to make sure that your doctor, if they do want to remove your ovaries and you're younger than 65, you need to be clear on the reason why. Mm -hmm. Some reasons may be that you have a family <coughs> history of ovarian cancer, mm -hmm. um, that you're at risk of ovarian cancer, or that you have contraindications to any hormones. But if there's none of that going on, you know, because you're listening to this podcast, that <laughs> my, my, my ovaries are still producing enough estrogen to protect me mm -hmm. against Alzheimer's, protect mm, me wow. against having a heart attack or stroke to protect my bone health. So I'm not producing yeah. enough to have a period, but I'm producing enough to prevent osteoporosis, mental decline wow. and all that. So I, on bone health, for example, I want to understand like, what are some ways that we, can we make perimenopause and menopause easier on ourselves? I've heard about strength training and muscle building. Like, are there other things that we can do to start to like, feel like we've got some control here? Definitely. Okay. So, you know, 
for, there's always natural herbs that you can take, natural supplements, women's health vitamins, prenatal vitamins. So starting with the basic nutrients, right? Mm -hmm. Then you want to work out because mm -hmm. working out will help combat agitation, mm -hmm. okay? Anytime you get to a point where your interpersonal relationships are being affected, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, you got in trouble at work because mm -hmm. you're a little too hostile with your coworkers. Your relationship is having problems. You want to make sure that you're able to tunnel your energy into cardiovascular mm -hmm. workout and weight training. So it keeps your sanity and it keeps you from really killing everybody at home <laughs> and at work, and just yeah. losing it. Um, and so just overall, not eating fried foods, staying away from spicy food. These things mm. exacerbate hot flashes. Huh. I let it spicy. So everything good, <laughs> you know, chocolate, spicy, and caffeine. Oh, oh, you chocolate. said chocolate. Yeah. Who said that? that? And the caffeine. He said that. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down, slow down, mm. slow down. Slow down. Mm. Slow like down. dark so, chocolate So too? if I'm 40 years old, which I am, um, and I'm preparing, I'm, I'm preparing my mind first for perimenopause and wanting to prepare my body, you were suggesting... And I'm, I'm, and I'm go ahead, go listening, ahead yes. I'm not fighting you. You're suggesting that if I drink less coffee, have less chocolate, what were the other things that we really wanted? All, I spicy food, 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 spicy food, food. food. I may have an easier time in that the transition. transition. Okay. Yeah, cool. so just overall improving your lifestyle. Wow. Yeah, the fair improve, you know, improvements. Improving, right? I don't need all that coffee. Um, and so that just gets you ready to enter a phase of life where your metabolism is being slow because mm -hmm. with the decrease of estrogen, we also studies have shown that we decrease in glucose metabolism. So mm. that is where the fatigue, where you just can't, you know, mm. you're just, it, everything Ooch. is harder. <laughs> Well, now we're over here with our toddlers. That's another topic. I love it. I love it. I love it. Question. Have you guys ever experienced or seen like your mom or your aunties or anybody go through? My mom, my mom is a young mommy and she's, she's in pre Peri, 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 peri menopause. Why I keep peri, saying I keep, wee, wee. Peri. Okay, she's in <laughs> perimenopause because she still has her periods. Okay. So I'm gonna make sure I tell her mom. Okay, you're so not what are the signs? Yet. But what are the signs that hot flashes? Okay. Um Oh, everything you described. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Literally. Okay. But she still has her period every month. And, but the thing is her periods are like so much more intense right now. So she's at the first phase of yeah. perimenopause. It starts coming closer together, heavier. Then it starts wow. going every other month, yeah. every two months. And then you're like, Ooh, eight months. Woo. And then boom, she hits hard. She's coming with a vengeance. And oh then you're fatigued. Goodness. If you're having any signs of anemia, anything out of the ordinary, yes. go follow up with your doctor. Don't just sit there and live with this because average age of menopause in America is 51. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're 48 mm -hmm. and you're over there sitting struggling, I mean, you need to, you don't have to let this take your life over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the focus. So. You said though, mm -hmm. in order to actually determine it, they have to do a hormone panel. Yeah. Right. So that's the only way to truly uh, define if On you paper, are going chemical. through- Okay, so then, okay. But what's Without the way? that, then you're just getting a regular checkup and they wouldn't know. Like, so you could have all these symptoms, go to the I doctor. I would know. I would know by just well, you, you telling me. Well, you are clearly a different doctor. <laughs> but my question is, okay, so let's say somebody does, they're experiencing it at 48. What do you do to, do you like slow the process down? Like, how do you, how do you get the support and the help? Yeah, like, what does like that look hormone like? Hormone therepy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we're talking about hormone the treatment. Hormone replacement therapy? Yeah. I think hormone replacement therapy has a bad rap. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. because they did a study back in the day and they, um, women had breast cancer, uterine cancer, but those were high doses of hormones. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so I am comfortable with hormones because I just, I look at the literature and you just got to stay with evidence-based medicine. Yeah. Mm. Was this what Halle Berry just said? Yes. That she was She's like, like, I'll like, be I'll on hormone forever. replacement therapy the rest of my mm. life. Yeah. So can we talk about like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. is yes. it, first off, is it accessible or is yes. it like Halle Berry? Okay. So <laughs> can <laughs> we talk? Like, can we talk more about yes. hormone replacement therapy? Right. What is it? What does it mean? Who has access to it? Can we be on it forever and feel great? Yes, what you can. Is it? Okay, so yes. so <laughs> hormone replacement therapy, you guys know what birth control is? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's hormones. I just hate to say birth control. It's like a misnomer because yeah. it's mm -hmm. hormones, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's women that have their tubes tied. Mm -hmm. They may be experiencing abnormal perimenopause, meaning that their, that their periods are causing anemia. So that means it's too heavy. So I may have to put you on 
hormones. Mm. But really, they're like, oh, what is that? Oh, I'm just going to put you, oh, Dr. Shakur, this is a birth control. Mm. So, you know, in our minds, we got to, we have to step away from thinking that hormones is just to prevent pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because we call yeah. it birth control. So the treatments can be, and I say birth control just because you guys would recognize, oh, yeah, there's a birth yeah. control. So that's a treatment. And then we go into actual pills of estrogen and progesterone. That's mm -hmm. the hormones that we have as women. And you can take it pill form, just like a birth control, mm -hmm. patch form. You can take it as a vaginal um, suppository. suppository. Mm -hmm. So just like how you can take different forms of what we know as birth control, you can take your hormone replacement yeah. therapy the same way. And then what does it do? How does it um, impact it, Estrogen. You? The hormone is, is estrogen. Estrogen. You're getting yourself an and, influx yes, of estrogen. and progesterone. And so both so so both of these hormones kind of balance each other out. Progesterone's role is um, we most know it as for pregnancy, okay. where it builds that nest to hold the baby. Okay. You, you need a certain level of progesterone, like women with recurrent pregnancy loss, yes. they have a low progesterone. Mm. So I may give you some progesterone supplementation so that nest stays and it holds mm. the baby versus just come out wow. as a period and we lose the baby. Wow. So they kind of are the yin and the yang for women's health. Okay, so where was I going with this question? Was that brain fog kicking in? Um, <laughs> No, okay, we were talking about estrogen and the the fact that it's this hormone replacement, you need estrogen, it's keeping, the treatments. keeping you there. Treatments, treatments yeah. correct. So let me ask you this. My mom, she actually had her tubes tied, young, 30s. Oh, okay. Okay? Wow. My mom went through menopause early, 40s. So 40s is, okay, that's right? still menopause, normal. Menopause. She went, no, menopause. Because like, I asked my mom this. I was like, mom, when did you go? Because I remember, and we were talking about like, what were the experiences? My mom, I mean, my mom in the dead of winter would have the windows open. Right. With the window, my dad's under a duvet. She's in a sheet. My mom cut off all her hair. She went to a pixie cut. Like she was- it's like the neck. Yeah, she you was know, like, it's oh. too hot. She could not stand. But oh. I remember even, I feel like, her even saying, oh, I didn't get period. She was still experiencing these hot flashes and this irritability, I feel like long after the periods mm -hmm. were done. Another fact that's important yes. is that you can experience all these menopausal symptoms mm -hmm. seven to 10 years after. And Ew. Yes, and 13% of women hmm. will experience this for longer than 10 years, 13%. Okay. Just, okay. I recently heard something that that really made sense to me because it, it truly feels this way. Somebody described menopause as another form of puberty. Yes. Right? Mm. Yes. And how we can understand that teenagers enter puberty and they have these hormone changes and these influxes and we have grace and we have understood, oh, it's just teenage hormones. But women are not accounted for with the same grace and accommodation in life. And so when I heard that, I was like, that does make sense. And then they said that like, Women can go to go through like a, a puberty period three times in their lives. We do. That's and why we have an OBGYN. For our YouTube audience, Dr. Kendra is now holding her microphone. It's fine. For our audio audience, you don't care. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> okay, that was good. So we, when we were adjusting the mics, we t brought up um, hormone disruptors, right? And a lot of the factors that I think we experience living in the Western world, as far as the food, where our foods are processed and all of that. I've also heard studies that girls are going through puberty, puberty and starting their menstrual cycles earlier. And now you're also saying that it used to be 45 for perimenopause and menopause, but now it's getting earlier. Ooh, that was a good connection. So is, so is, is there something connected with the food that yes. is uh, yes. accelerating this? When process? I used to do, when I deliver babies now, and I think I told you guys this before, I could tell everybody, they are like, what took you so long? They're, they're alert, <laughs> they're looking, making eye contact. <laughs> And I'm thinking before when I was in training, you know, the babies were still like, I'm not up yet. Right. Like, why are you, where am mm. I? Like, but now it's like, oh, I, I recognize your voice, mm -hmm. Dr. Jenny. <laughs> are you crazy? Like, you know. Um, and so that goes <laughs> along long with enough. the foods that Ugh. we're eating. Mm. And then for mm -hmm. a lot of black women, mm -hmm. it's in our hair products. Oh, I've read this it's too. It's in our perms. It's in the things that that our mothers are putting in our hair since we were little. Mm -hmm. And so now we're coming out with endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer. So it's in everything. A lot of the preservatives that are put into hair products, foods, it's banned in other first world yeah. countries. Yeah. And even if you see them in other countries, there's different ingredients. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Sad. And so that's you know, fear. that that's 
I know. That's scary. Going back to that other episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. That's scary. Me. <laughs> I think that's so fascinating. And I think that that's something that people also really need to consider when they're asking themselves, why is this happening? My parents didn't go through this or mm-hmm. da, da, da. Like we are living in different times. Yeah. We see all the things. Every day you turn on something, they tell you something you thought was the best thing for you is recalled because of some undisclosed processing or ingredient. And that's, I mean, it ties back into everything that I think we're facing in health and mm-hmm. especially in women's health is Absolutely. what we're combating on a daily basis, environmentally, physically, emotionally, and how that plays into our overall longevity and health. That is like, I know the place that I'm at, I'm done having kids, that's over. And now I just keep thinking about what do I want to feel like going forth for the rest of my life? So being mindful about what I eat, thinking about what options are available, things to look out for. Like, like you were, it, it's funny that you said that because <clears throat> recently, earlier on this year, I was having like brain foggy moments. Mm-hmm. I'm in my forties. So I'm like, what, what? Like I put something back in the wrong place or like I would get wires confused and I'm a very efficient I'm person. I'm sorry, I just have to insert jaw drop. Okay, let's continue. Jaw drop. Well, I mean- In you, her 40s? Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, knew that's what it was. I, I, I kind of- I mm-hmm. mean, okay, continue. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Continue. She prayed. So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I consider myself, like I pride myself on being efficient. I have a good memory. I'm, I'm on it. If I do something, check, check, check. And I would do things and I would stand in the kitchen or like stand where I was and be like, what? How did yeah. we get here? How did oh, I wow. get here? And I remember thinking to myself, I think I need to go get my brain checked. But then I learned that brain fog can be a cause or, or an indication Very or a symptom of perimenopause. And I'm in my 40s. I've even seen hormone specialists after I had my daughter because I was like, I felt like things were happening with my hormones, seeing an endocrinologist. Oh, and I remember, okay. and, and she was explaining things to me. And one of the questions she asked me was, she said, when did your mom go through menopause? And I was like, in her early 40s. And she's like, oh, she's like, be mindful of that. Right. And she's like, family history is important, right? Mm. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's really fascinating to just kind of, we always have to be thinking and proactively prioritizing what, how we want to feel in our bodies and advocating for ourselves for like what kind of life we want to live and just not like, oh, it's fine. I'll just think, I'll just get like really knowing these things. Like this episode, I think, was so important. And it's funny because when we first said we were going to have it, I was like, I was like, I don't really know if I have much to offer, but now right. I'm so fascinated right. here. And oh, by the way, kudos to you because you're so good. Mm-hmm. You're so good at it explaining yourself. Yes, girl. You and are you're so proactive. active. You're yes. also um, low-key a comedian, Dr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kendra. You're low-key oh, a comedian. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know you're yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. You're funny. <laughs> when you were so. impersonating the baby a moment ago. <laughs> my husband <laughs> doesn't think so, though. What? Yeah, can we say that again? I feel like he's hating, and that's yeah. okay. Dr. Kendra, Mr. Kendra is hilarious. Wherever you be at. She's hilarious. We love her here. You do. I'm going to replay that on a loop. Yes. Yes. Thank you. You do have a future in TV of some sort. (laughs) Thank you. You're a show. But I do want to say that the bottom line of everything that you're saying is that what's often looked over in Western medicine and as a community like us, all Mm -hmm. of us, is that we overlook behavior and lifestyle modifications. Mm -hmm. And even Mm -hmm. um, myself, like, you know, in the past, you know, I only have 20 minutes to see you in the traditional uh, setting of medicine. And I have to talk about the important points, right? You know, prevention of cancer, cancer cells, precancerous cells. And then one minute, okay, you can stop, you know, here's this uh, link. Here's this um, person you can go to for diet, exercise, da 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 Or if we get time to say it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the bottom line is, is that we have to take more seriously our behavior and lifestyle. Yeah. And unfortunately, I've learned recently that we really are what we eat. Mm -hmm. Like all these cliches that we heard in the past, like, oh my God, I really am what I eat. Mm -hmm. And you really feel that in, I think, your fourth decade of life. Mm -hmm. Hello. Well, technically, because as my husband likes to say, when it's someone's birthday and they turn 40, he says, welcome to your fifth decade. What does that mean? Because the first 10. 10 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50. Oh, don't put me on that. That's what he says. mm -mm. That's childish. That's a fifth dimension, y'all. Welcome. (laughs) It's so unnecessary. Why does that mean that way? I don't know. That's annoying. Why would he say that? Consistently. Look out for that in December. I'm not going to talk to him when I turn 40. Um, (laughs) So, okay. I think just to try to wrap up, we don't have a listener letter, but we have sort of like a, a request for discussion from a listener. And she says, 
can you all discuss <coughs> perimenopause for the older mamas going through it and the complete support we need from our significant others? Because it seems like the husbands don't always get it. The husbands, mm. the partners. And my, you know, some of the things I've read, like the workforce, like there's so many areas at which people don't understand it. Thus, we are treated like something's wrong with us. Right. How do that we get them very to act important. right? Well, first, we have to recognize that mm -hmm. there's an issue. Mm -hmm. Just like when you're acting a fool, mm -hmm. then boom, period. You're a period. Yep. And right. then all of a sudden, <laughs> Ashley. Huh? Oh, you know sense. I'm a line. Ashley, <laughs> Ashley, let it know. She we'll call Ashley. She'll be like, oh, my period's coming. I can't mm -hmm. stand anybody today. Mm -mm. Yeah. No, we but already once you know, know <laughs> you can handle right. things yep. better. Yeah. Life hits you. You're like, oh, I'm on my period. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. let me just take a back seat, lay low. Yep. So, <laughs> lay low. You know, like, so we have to, so I think us, so we don't actually know about perimenopause. Mm -hmm. We don't put it together. Mm -hmm. So first is educating ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's giving yourself the benefit of the doubt. What does that mean? It means, okay, me. Recently, I, I slapped on a pat, an estrogen patch for myself, mm -hmm. right? I'm agitated. Uh, I'm kind of popping off. Mm -hmm. So I said, no. you know what? Let me not, tr let me treat myself. I treat yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just don't even put two and two together for myself. So let's give ourselves the benefit of the doubt. And if something's off, let's ask for help. Wait, share how that went. The estrogen patch. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So it's low dose. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's basically like a birth control dosage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... I just felt better. I had more energy. My skin, I was glowing, mm. you know, just moisture. And down there, yeah. she was, it was a lot of discharge, mm. normal discharge. Discharge from the vagina, ladies, is normal. Yeah. We guess. It's normal. It's not just supposed to be nothing in the undies. Mm -hmm. It's right. moisture. It's KY gel that I was, you know, so my husband liked it. Yeah. yeah. You know? So speaking of yeah. that, yeah. So the husbands and the partners. How do they support so, it? So, yeah, so right? Because they benefit be from like, the estrogen, that estrogen patch. Yeah, so <laughs> once we recognize what's going on, you can bring your spouse to the doctor. Mm. Just like when you mm. have, if you're, if you're, oh, if you're blessed enough to have, you know, your significant other through your pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, just one visit is enough to kind of get get the guys on board. So, yeah, having them come to, with you right. to get information, watching um, things online that talk about perimenopause. So they can say, oh, that is you. Right. You know, so kind of like taking them into the journey as we are discovering things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, listen to this with me. That's what's going on with me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so kind of just taking them along how you would on a pregnancy. Mm hmm. That's smart. That so is. you just made me think of something. I said at the very beginning that like all I want to talk about is, is menopause, which is very heavily true. And you were saying having them watch something about perimenopause. We need more content about perimenopause and menopause. Thank you. That's I think, on my to-do list. I think that might be my our future. Yes. I mean, y'all could be on the TikTok talking about it. We about to be. It's going yeah. down. I'm and, and can I tell you how old are you? Actually? But, but, <laughs> but can they talk? Get on the ticket. But can I can I tell you that the majority of women are now. 40s and 50s. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to be hearing more about it mm. because it's oh. a lot of women that the population mm. yeah. is now end of 30s and 40s. That's and we're still having babies. Like, yeah. you know, we are 45 and y'all got to pay attention to us. Oh, we're so that, revolutionary. That you know? But also I'm looking at Three Alicia like, uh, y'all are 45. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, 33. We Wait, I you. missed it. Uh, I'm not in my 40s. She was, no, so that's, that's fair, but... Ashley, calm down. I mean, you're getting... No, I'm, you're I'm, not going to the door. Felicia's going to be so prepared. I have the whole year, boo. The whole year. Yeah, enjoy yourself. <laughs> That's when I got married. That's Jesus year. All that stuff. For all the fellas, for all the fellas watching, Felicia's 33. <laughs> Jesus year. Jesus and she loved Jesus. <laughs> Jesus jugs over there. <laughs> but, I also, but I'm also a human. Ooh, oh, ow. She loved God, but she can act real bad. Oh. <laughs> this is our, this is our ad for Felicia. <laughs> okay. The love of the Zodiac sign. Oh, my Lord. All right. We well, thank love. you so much to all of our listeners yes. and all of our watchers on Black Love's YouTube page. Make sure you're subscribed and don't miss an episode and leave us comments and likes and reviews. And uh, write us messages on Instagram at the Mamas and Podcast and also email us at podcasts with an S, S at blacklove.com. And thank you, Dr. Kendra, for coming thank back. You so much. Come back thank again, you again. Back. I was like, I don't know if they're going to have me. Back. Oh, you coming back oh, again. We love you. We You're the only one we had back. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, 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 you a repeat offender. We had back. Really?
Ooh. Yes, you're another earth sign, so you know I love when you come here, honey. It helps me. Because I just be over here swimming. She said it helps me. Look how the hour, the time just goes fast. She's so fast. She should come back. That was so good.